Has anybody else been in this room this morning? Sorry, I'm late, sir. Stop! Everybody in Vietnam knew General Ferris. His highest kill ratio. Oh, body count Ferris. The man I'm interested in was trained to go behind the lines in Nam and terminate people. Get out now and stay out. Is that clear? It's not possible, damn it. Now Solo is dead. I fought beside him for over two years. Got a terminal case. Fair play. Want to try me, kid? Are you ready? Time, Kellogg. It's 2108. That's 12 seconds better than yesterday, sir. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. The uh, walk was muddy this morning, sir, and I, uh... <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, it's all right, Kellogg. Don't have a stroke on me. <sighs> Coffee hot this morning, Kellogg? Piping, sir. Where's Colonel Riggins? Picking up the global sit rep, sir. White House offered to send a car, sir. Just have my staff car brought around. Let's not make a big thing out of this. Is there something wrong, sir? Has anybody else been in this room this morning, Kellogg? No, sir. Sorry, I'm late, sir. Stop! General, get back! I'm gonna try to hold this tripwire still, Riggins. I want you to back away and then die for cover. Sir, please let me do this. No, I've got it. Intelligence says the safe money's on some Middle East nasty boys, something called April Patrol, headed by one Mustafa Kamir. Maybe if they ran out of months, they wouldn't have any more revolutions. As far as personal enemies, his private file's pretty thin. Widower, no children, not many friends. I'm surprised somebody didn't try before now. Everybody in Vietnam knew General Ferris, youngest brigade commander in I-Corps. Highest kill ratio. Old body count Ferris. Yeah, well, old body count seems pretty reluctant to allow Chris to go in for him. Problem's this. Yeah. Eyes only from the Pentagon. Urgent request for service. <laughs> the P 
Pentagon, huh? I thought we were civilians. All right, now that we've got Jeff's opinion, what do you think? Been a major player ever since Vietnam. Panama, Grenada, Desert Storm. It's a go, then. Yeah. You'll excuse me, Mr. Chance, but I find this human target business unnecessary at best. They didn't pin these on me for hiding in foxholes. This isn't a question of personal bravery, General. Maybe not, but it is a question of duty. When I put this uniform on 32 years ago, I put my life on the line. I've never backed down from that commitment before. Nor have I. No, your record shows that. Special Forces E-5, Battlefield Commission as Second Lieutenant, Seems you didn't care much for the officer's rank, though. We sure don't seem to match up too well, do we? How am I expected to command the Army from up here? By remote control? We have a full communication system on board, General. You can stay in constant contact. And meanwhile, I'm confined to this aircraft like some sort of prisoner. The ground rules are the same for every client. Once I replace you, the Blackwing becomes your home until the problem is neutralized. The problem, yes. I don't know how many times I've had to phone a dead man's family to break the news, but Sergeant Kellogg, his father and I served together. That phone call was the most difficult of my life. Okay, Mr. Chance, you'll have my full cooperation. Let's get started. You're married for 35 years. That's correct. Seven years since your wife died. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. We're getting there. No romantic activities, no casual involvements? Oh, I don't see where that's any of your damn business. Sir, that is really good for a stress pattern. Could you do that again? Sorry. General, I need to know everything I can. Of course. This is not easy for me. Please continue. <laughs> Relax, General. My executive officer is Colonel Riggins. Been with me about seven years now. Good man, a loyal, fanatically loyal. Riggins knows me like a book. So he could be a problem. General Ferris reporting for duty, sir. I don't believe it. I'll take that as passing muster. Your West Point class ring and your watch, sir. If you're really going to be me, you better take this, too. I'm not a superstitious man, but it was a gift from my wife. Thank you, General. I'll take good care of it. Good morning, Colonel. General, I wish you would reconsider and allow us to move you to more secure quarters. Absolutely not. This is my home, and I will not be intimidated out of it. Now, have you scheduled the security briefing I requested? Yes, sir. We're on for 0800 hours. And as per your request of forensics, 
The remains of the tripwire. Well, to be honest, sir, I don't know what you'll be able to make of it. Sir? Sir, are you all right? Yes. Yes, Colonel, I'm fine. I'd like to be left alone for a few minutes. Yes, sir. Libby. Always good to hear from you, General. Libby, is Jeff there? Yes, of course he is. He's right here. Jeff, can you see what I'm holding? No, not very well. It's a monofilament, high grade, tungsten center, boron coated. Sound familiar? Yeah. Libby, I want you to get into Pentagon Records. All right, it, it'll take some time, but it won't be a problem. Okay, talk to Jeff once you're in. He'll supply the names. Chance out. You want to tell me what that was about? Bad memories. Make yourselves comfortable. Sir, we've got a lot of ground to cover. The CIA has identified possible assassins from two separate cells of Khmer's group out of Beirut. Well, you can forget about them, Colonel. Gentlemen, the man that tried to kill me is not a terrorist. He's not a revolutionary. He's an American. And he is one of us. Gentlemen, I want you to take a look at this. It used to be called the Python Wrap. They don't make them like that anymore. Back in Vietnam, there were some real artists when it came to booby traps. Sir, you think this guy was with the Seals, Berets, Lerps, something like that? You ever done any fly fishing, Colonel? Fly fishing, sir? You take a good fly fisherman. I mean, a real expert. The way he ties his knots is like a signature. Gentlemen, I want you to dig up everything you can on a man named Solo. Harry Solo. Officially, he was a training officer attached to the Green Berets in I Corps, Quang Tin Province, 1969. Death squad. Probably. Well, sir, if he ran covert missions outside of regular military authority, then the actual records probably are incomplete. Gentlemen, find Harry Solo. I want to know where he's been for the past 20 years. I especially want to know where he is right now. This briefing is over. Do, 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 do. Baby. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. There's quite a video collection in the lounge, General. Inertial guidance system on this bird? Well, sort of a step beyond. Hey, look, you know anything about soldering? Excuse me? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, hold, hold on to this. Now, j just point this and keep it steady. See this wire I'm holding right here? This one. There you go. Such a complex operation seems to me Chance runs a rather loose ship. Oh, no, sir. It's tight. It's a very tight ship. Tight, as in close. That's the only way it works up here. That's the circuit there. Go ahead. Thank you. You two served together in Vietnam? Uh, not together exactly. I flew choppers. Sort of taxied him back and forth. I gather he's had a hard time putting some of his covert actions behind him. You know, it's easy to make it disappear on paper. You just drop it into a shredder and it never happened. But the people they sent him in there to kill, they're all still dead. You think a man can just turn that off like a switch, General? Of course not. Is that why he does this now? 
taking the place of the victim, turning it all around? What do you think, sir? Sir. Good morning, Colonel. Records show nothing on this man Solo. You mean to tell me the Army has no idea where he's been since Vietnam in 69? No, sir. What I mean is nothing. Records say he never existed. Hmm. Well, that's impossible. Stay on it, Colonel. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Your appointment book list of 130 lunch with Major Lewis. Should I make provisions to carry on? Cancel it. I don't want to be disturbed. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I hope you've had better luck than the Army has. Luck? No. Good old scientific methodology. I tapped into DOD's mainframe and collated information on all ex-military personnel trained in spec ops, counterinsurgency, covert actions, and recon. Now, assuming Solo's real name isn't on record, I ran a filter, screening for his specific personality profile. Bingo. Only two names popped up. First name, Parkhurst, comma, Donald. And the other name? Chance. Comma, Christopher. So, Parkhurst is Solo's alias. Continue, Lib. He returned from Vietnam to Walter Reed Army Hospital, detached from service and transferred to DC Medical Center, psychiatric ward. Isn't that where you were? Solo was there too. That's the good news. The bad news is, that's it. From there, he was released and disappeared. Maybe I can pick up his trail at the VA. Chris, you're pretty heated up on this one, aren't you? No, I'm OK. Keep pushing on your end, Lib. Hey, General. I'll tell you, hands here, they're tough. I remember this one job where Chris went in as this mob guy. His name was Three Fingers Milano. Right, I had to take one of Chris's hands and bind down two of the fingers and then cover them over. He lost almost all nerve sensation in that part of his hand for about a week. I understand your pilot met Chance in Vietnam. How'd you hook up? Spend time in the service? So, uh, no, sir. <laughs> Not me, but my dad, he did pack me off to military school once. I lasted about a semester there, and then they kicked me out for, uh, for what's that word? Insubordination? That's it, sir. That's the word. <laughs> no, Chris, he just, he phoned me out of the blue, because he'd seen zombies on holiday, right? Did you see that? No, well, I was a special effects makeup artist, anyway. And I was the first guy to use computer-generated masks, real cutting-edge stuff. Anyway, Chris had seen it, and he liked it, and he offered me this gig, and I mean, with all these techno-fringe benefits, who could resist, huh? This looks like Field Marshal Vassar. Oh, it is. Some foreign agents wanted to ace him, so they sent Chris in, and he took command of one of the divisions in the NATO war games in 86. He even uh, captured the American field headquarters. Oh, I remember. I was in it. Chris? That can't be you. It's so good to see you. God, you look great. I'm doing a little better than I was last time I saw you. <laughs> I see you still prefer sitting out here instead of inside. I was never your average patient, was I, Elaine? <laughs> no, and, and I always let you get away with... With murder. I'm sorry, you know, even psychiatrists can make Freudian slips. Elaine, I've got a problem and I need your help. The medical records for a patient. Uh, 
You know I can't do that. I know, but I need you to trust me on this. When most everything was gone for me, you were there and you believed in me. I'm asking for that again. Who? Oh. The man I'm interested in was trained to go behind the lines in Nam and terminate people. He didn't know them, they were just targets. And of course, it wasn't murder because he had orders. When it was all over, he ended up here. You, you want your own records? No, the records of the man who trained me. He taught me how to strangle a victim with a jungle vine and make a bomb with a cigarette lighter. He ended up here too, Elaine, just like I did, and nobody even told me. It's, it's the confidentiality. A life is at stake. I have to stop him. I have to find out why he's still killing. Do you understand? Colonel, the general asked that you not be disturbed. I'll worry about that, Sergeant. General Ferris. How long has he been in there, Sergeant? Most of the afternoon, sir. Sergeant, lend me a hand. Three September 1976 AMA. Yeah, against medical advice. Well, I would think so. It's extremely antisocial behavior, unstable, violent. How could they just put him out on the street? No, it doesn't work that way. Let me see. Oh yeah, here. Patient released to custody of relative. An uncle. Tabler. Russell Tabler. Hmm. Good old Uncle Russ. Came after me, too. Russ Tebler's a recruiter for the CIA. sweepstakes off of Russ, you may already be a winner. Oh, well, well. But an unexpected house guest. Thought you'd be glad to see me. Been a long time. Uncle Russ. What do you want here? I'm looking for your cherished nephew, Harry Solo. Ancient history. Now, why don't you tell me what you really want here? You're missing something. Talk to me, Russ. You'd be typing up your padded expense accounts with your toes. I can't do that. You know that. You give Harry the same come on you gave me. Come to work for the agency, and I'll get you out of the nut house. All right. All right. Let go. Who's running Harry Solo? Not us. Not anymore. What, well, he went freelance? More of a loan out. We had him for about seven years. Man would do anything. I mean, the worst kind of wet work. Liked it, too. Hell, you know him. When I knew him, he thought he was fighting for his country. Yeah, didn't you all? It was in 85, I think, maybe 86. All that stuff was going down in Liberia. Marxists, martial law, juju, remember? Total anarchy. Army had some advisors in there. Congress jumped all over them and told them to pull everybody out, right? That's when you send your people in. <laughs> oh. The Army pulled the uniforms out. But they kept the show going. Training people. Sending in weapons. Are you telling me Harry Solo was working for the army? Yeah. <laughs> it's a real kick, eh? Ends up right where he started off, crawling through the jungle looking for a throat to cut. Who? I want names, his army contacts. Who pulled his strings, Russ? Good luck there, pal. It was a very short chain of command. That operation reported directly to the intelligence staff of the Joint Chiefs. So why is Harry Solo trying to kill Kurt Ferris? 
He isn't. That I know for sure. How? Because corpses can't kill a hot shot. Harry Solo is dead. What? Whole Liberian operation went south. Army tried to pull their people out. Got about half of them. The rest of them didn't make it. Gorillas caught up with them. <laughs> oh, I bet old Harry went down swinging. But I'll guarantee you, he went down. Humor me, Russ. When your people were running him, how'd you make contact with him? I don't know. You want to contact him? Hold a seance. You're lucky that he's dead, Chance. The way I understand it, you were way outclassed. You hear me, Chance? He would have roasted your liver and fed it to you. You know, Russ, you ought to think about moving to some place with better security. Think about it, old buddy. <sighs> Evening, Harry. Who dragged you into this? The what? We gotta sit down sometime and have a nice long chat. But now is sure not the time. I got no war against you, Chance. Get out now and stay out. Is that clear? Harry. Identify it, soldier. Nine millimeter Beretta, silenced. Good. I taught you well. That's something you ought to remember. We'll be right back. Young lady. You can just call me Libby, General. All right, Libby. I don't mean to interrupt, but how soon before the Black Wing lifts off again? Well, once Chris is on board, he'll have to get back into your face. If there's something you need, now would be a good time. I need to call the Pentagon, but unless there's a certain amount of security on the line... Jam I'm... or scramble. You can do both? Hey, jam, scramble, poached, over easy, I can do it all, General. Well, calls are routinely scrambled, but I can add jamming. We've got an Artec 700 on board. Most people call it the squirrel. The squirrel, I'm familiar with it. Good. I'll set up. Mind if I ask where you learned all this? Did you work for Radio Free Europe or something like that? <laughs> Hardly. The company? Made TS-10 rights, General. What went wrong? Guys, you ask a lot of questions. What do you mean, what went wrong? TS-10s don't quit, Libby. No. <laughs> I guess they don't. We hit a small glitch. Project went bad. It exploded. I planned it, I ran it. And you paid for it. <laughs> you must work for the U.S. government. You don't seem to be terribly upset about it. Well, why should I be, General? They let me in and out of their systems all day long to take whatever I need. The way I figure it, they kind of work for me now. It's funny how things turn around. I mean, if you can't laugh about life, you don't belong in it, right? How did you end up here? 20 questions again, OK? I'd known Chris for a couple of years, and he needed somebody to coordinate this high-tech Boy Scout deal, so here I am. So you do it for him? Have a seat, General. I won't bite you, I promise. Okay, we're set. Let's go. General. 
Harry Solo. Also known as Donald Parkhurst, ex-CIA. Still draw a blank? I've made it clear. That name means nothing to me. Then why does he want you dead? Let me help you. Africa, mid-1980s. Africa? Liberia. Army intelligence ran that show, and the CIA said Solo was yours. I have no knowledge of any Liberian operation. How could you not know? Look, I'm trying to save your life here. So forget about classified or security risks. I want the truth, and I want it now, and the deal's off. Well, then you might as well let me off this aircraft, because there is nothing more I can tell you. Chris, this whole thing stinks, man. Yeah, most jobs do. Oh, man, don't give me that. It's this job. It's Solo. Maybe. Or maybe Ferris is telling the truth. Maybe I've been looking right past it. You have something, Chris? Follow. I'll be down in five. OK, Chris. First, I want to smooth things with the general. I think I might have blown him out. Yeah. Enlisted man's revenge. You want to tell me just what's going on here, Jeff? Ever since Chris identified Harry Solo, or Parkhurst, or whatever his name is, he's been acting real strange. OK, for six months, Chance combat trained under Solo. Never, not once, did he ever beat him hand to hand. Never. Can you hear me? This is Chance, Libby. I'm back in Ferris's quarters. Apparently, he's been missed. I need to ask the general for a cover story, uh, an appointment or something, just in case I. Never once in seven years did I see General Ferris throw his head on a bed. It looks like he went out of here earlier through that window. Not to mention that radio, whatever that thing is you have, and a conversation that by no stretch of the imagination sounds right. Just who the hell are you? Easy, Riggins. Just take it easy. With your connections to Army Intelligence, you've probably heard the name Christopher Chance. There's a nickname that's kind of stuck, too. The Human Target. A human target, uh, no, it's, it's just a rumor. The Pentagon asked me to step in for the general after the bombing attempt. All right. I can see you need convincing. Uh, this won't be very pretty, so... <sighs> Could you put the gun down now? Riggins. What? Did you repeat that name again? I'll inform the general. What is it? MPs just found a body dumped outside. A CIA official. Rust Hadler. Yeah. How do you know? It's Solo. What? It's a message. Do you understand what you're up against now? He's going to keep coming. Whatever happened to him in Africa, he's not going to stop until he kills everybody connected with it. No, it's not possible, damn it. Now Solo is dead. You 
You told me you had nothing on him. You said he didn't even exist. You ran the Liberian operation. I didn't know Solo was connected with that. It was a long time ago now. They were all dead. You sent him in there, then turned your back on him. No need to bother General Ferris, right? How many other private deals you're running, Colonel? My duty is to protect the General. Don't put it back on him. This is you using your own power, your own private games. For what? For this country. You of all people should know that what we sometimes have to do isn't always black and white. You don't stop, do you? There's always another secret war he can lay off on national security. Another killing ground. Well, this time it's come back home. Solo's not going to stop until he kills him. He's working backwards. He'll know how I found him. Dr. Cosgrove. Elaine, listen, this is Chris. You may be in danger. Chris, uh, Chris, I... Elaine, are you there? You get a good look at Tabler's body, you keep coming at me. You're gonna end up just like him. Taught you how to backtrack, kid. Cosgrove to Tabler. I go from Tabler to Cosgrove. Now I got you right in the middle. If you hurt Dr. Cosgrove, Harry. That's entirely up to you, kid. But then again, you always were real bullheaded. You know, I think you're right. I think we should talk. That's what I had in mind. Just you and me. I wouldn't have it any other way. I always figured you for a nature lover. How about the National Arboretum at dawn? You'll know where to find me. I'll be waiting. Colonel, I think we should... No records and no witnesses, I presume. Don't worry, Doc. I won't hurt you unless he double crosses me and he's got a terminal case of fair play. <laughs> Yes, kid. You haven't forgotten a thing. Where's Dr. Cosgrove? Safe and sound. The battle's not with her, is it? You want to try me, kid? Or shall we just uh, talk about it like old friends? Yeah, let's talk. Although your last old friend ended up with his lungs full of cyanide gas. Russ Tabler sold me out. He left me to die. I thought you were a pro, Harry. So your operation went bad. They pulled the plug. You took casualties. That happens. That wasn't how it went down, man. We were deserted. You know how long they hunted me in that jungle? I didn't count it in years or even in months. 
It was hour by hour, day and night. In the rain, in the heat. There was just one thing that kept me going that was the payoff. From the top right down to the last man. You're wrong about General Ferris. He didn't do this to you. He didn't even know about it. I don't care whether he knew the details or not. Look, Harry, they were wrong, but this is not the way. You remember what it was like back in Nam? We never knew why we were killing him, did we? Orders had come down, and we just put out the lights. Intelligence had put some papers on some lieutenant's desk saying such and such a mayor of such and such a hamlet was a VC. Well, who says so? Some prisoner they hook up to a field telephone while I crank him with juice? Yeah, things were bad back then, Harry, but I never saw you take down an innocent man. <laughs> That's the whole point, man. There ain't any innocent men. Not you, not me, not General Ferris. He didn't do this to you. They all did. I'm talking about ultimate accountability for all of it, everything they did to us. And where does that end? When does the killing stop? When does payback stop, Harry? Look, come in with me. You need help. I can help you. Visitors? I never figured you to cheat on an old buddy, Chance. Harry, this... I'm sorry, kid. Are you ready? your neck, I will. It's over. It's our business now, Chance. You're out of it. You don't get him, Riggins. You're in serious trouble. You don't get him. I'm not gonna let you take him in here later. He was killed trying to escape. Or you're just gonna drag him around a corner and put a bullet in him. You can't let him live. All those stories you might tell about your own secret deals. Get General Ferris on the phone. Get him! Call the general. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, Libby, I'd like to thank you. Take care, sir. It's uh, been a hoot, sir. Libby, I think the company lost a good lady. Thank you, General. Stay well. Hell of a crew you got there. <laughs> they get the job done. Maybe not exactly by the book, but... But in their own way. Opened my eyes a little to a different style, I guess you might say. I don't know how to thank you. Don't ask me to put on a uniform again. Can't blame you. I don't look forward to dealing with Riggins, either. There'll be a congressional hearing, of course, and I'll have to accept part of the responsibility for his actions. I understand. I believe I've isolated myself too much in the past. Perhaps I should look at my command as more of a... more of a team effort. By the way, I think it helped. I'm afraid Solo will be going back into the VA for a very long time. 
I'm sorry for what you had to do. Thank you, sir. One other thing. The next time I see a certain German field marshal, I'll make him pay back all those drinks I bought after he beat me in the NATO games. Carry on, son. Target will be right back. Next on Human Target. Good, beautiful. Garner St. John, designer for the stars, impressive style. Let me move! What does anybody want from a fashion mogul anyway? The guy has a net worth in the million. We managed to make a pretty deadly enemy somewhere along the line. Steve, look out! Is there something going on between you two? Are you falling for this guy? Heads up! Tomorrow, will Becca give up a promising college career to be with Jesse? It's the love story of the season on Life Goes On. Now, stay tuned for Kamish next.